So NXT and AEW continue their tug of war over Dusty Rhodes legacy when NXT presents the Great American Bash and from June and July, two episodes of NXT TV will be branded the Great American Bash. Uh, obviously counter programming Fighter Fest from AEW. So this video is going to be about the history of the Great American Bash, obviously. And it's going to be a um a sort of conversation about, you know, whether they not do they have the right to do this, well NXT, but should they be doing it? That's two different questions, obviously. So first, the Great American Bash was created in 1985 by Dusty Rhodes as a late June, early July tradition. So um, it's kind of in, within the same realm right now. Uh, WWE uh, resurrected the event after WCW closed in 2004 as a SmackDown single brand pay-per-view. There was about four Great American Bash pay-per-views um, before it was rebranded as The Bash, which, of course, was really shitty <laughs> I mean, it's so generic and Vince loves America so it's kind of odd that he would get rid of the great American bash it's kind of strange but then in 2012 it was brought back as the great American bash as a special episode of Smackdown so uh, before we get into the card of the NXT uh, great American bash which really the first night is really the only one that has been posted so far um, we haven't we only have the main event of the entire program um, but we'll, we'll get to that. So, um, like, like I said, this is tug of war has been going on all year for Dusty's legacy. It's actually been going on in legal battles for a long time now. Uh, uh, Dust, uh, Cody trying to reclaim Dusty's, um, intellectual property, different, um, trademarks that WWE has let, uh, laps like bash at the beach or something else that he's been trying to just take and incorporate into AEW. Um, and, as the son of Dusty Rhodes and an executive at AEW, I understand that. Um, I don't exactly think that you should be doing that. Um, I think that if you create a, a new product, you should have new products, you know, but I understand, you know, maybe wanting something that belonged to your dad. And, you know, as far as royalties and things like that are concerned, you might just want that. And it might be sent have sentimental value. And so I, I can appreciate that. On the other hand, you have on the, w, on the WWE slash NXT side, more so the NXT side, because I don't think Vince McMahon cares this much. Um, you have two legitimate claims. Um, as far as AEW, you just have, well, I want my dad at the records. That's why I have the, you know, the old <laughs> I'm going to explain that in a minute. But, but people who have watched Stanford the Sun, you understand it. But, um, the, the the whole concept is that Dusty's final project was building NXT. You know, NXT was just as much Dusty's baby as it was Triple H's. And, you know, this is why they have, you know, the Dusty Classic Tag Team Tournament. And now they're kind of taking in more of Dusty's ideas. And, you know, War Games was another one, I think. I think that was a Dusty idea that Cody tried to take. And WWE was like, no, you know, we're using War Games. And, um, <laughs> so they've been, that's kind of why WWE has a legitimate claim. You know, Dusty's last great project was not an AEW project. It was NXT. You know, he was very hands-on and training a lot of the stars that are on Raw and SmackDown right now, you know, and so it, maybe I think, I think he was still there for a couple of the guys that are in, you know, maybe Finn Balor. I'm not sure when Dusty died. I don't remember what exactly what year, um, but it's been, it's been, you know, that was one of his final projects was building NXT. And that's on top of, so that has sentimental value as well. On top of the actual legal, WWE owns the name Great American Bash. So um, Dusty's, I think, stepdaughter or his daughter, uh, somebody just said, well, she married, Dusty married her mom. So I don't know how she's related to Dusty, but she's like, my my mom should get royalties or cut my mom a check for royalties. I'm like, mm, no, <laughs> that's not that's not how work for hire works, sweetie. Dusty never owned the IP of the Great American Bash. He never owned it. It was always owned by uh, either Jim Crockett Promotions or WCW. And now that WWE bought Jim Crockett Promotions and WCW, they are owned by WWE. Sorry, you know. So, I, he I mean he she probably get royalties, you know, for something. 
She has to, because I'm pretty sure you know Dusty's family still gets royalties. But um, it's kind of it's kind of stupid. So the the picture, um, there was an episode of Sanford and Son where um, there was an expensive collection of old jazz albums uh, called the Mellow Jelly Collection, and the Mellow Jelly Collection was uh, was 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 priceless. It was worth a lot of money, and the the the. <laughs> The ever the hustler, Fred Sanford decides he's going to try to trick this antique dealer into giving him these expensive records by the, these uh, uh valuable records by saying that he got the son of Mellow Jelly. So he's going to bring the son of Mellow Jelly to this antique dealer and he's going to say, well, I want my daddy's records. And he just kept saying it over and over again, trying to guilt this guy into giving him these these valuable records. And I think that's kind of what uh cody kind of does <laughs> and he does it off a little bit and in, 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 on as far as uh uh through social media and stuff like that like when he's asked he's kind of passive aggressive about it like every time he's tried to reclaim a dusty trademark and WWE has blocked it he's just kind of said like oh just trying to bring some things home no big deal and oh it doesn't matter but he keeps trying to do it right and, you know, that's like the whole whether he can use roads or not. Like he says, oh, I can use roads, but he doesn't use roads. Right. Even though Brandy does. Uh, so it's kind of strange. Um, but they've been going back and forth since Cody left about uh, what's Dusty's, you know, IP and all this type of stuff. It's really ugly. Now, we, we've set the basis that WWE can legally do it. Now, my question is, should they be doing it? And in my opinion. I'm not again, not an SJW, but I don't think this is a good idea. I think it's just ugly, you know. Like I don't like when they when they ran the Dusty Tag Team Tournament against uh, AEW. I don't like this. I don't like them using Dusty's uh, IP. Like I don't. I wouldn't mind them having it as a regular pay per view, but you're doing this just to counter you know, to counter program AEW, which is I'm a capitalist. I'm all for you counter programming, but you could use other names. You use the Great American Bash kind of as a fuck you to Cody and Dustin. That's really was the whole, that, that's what this is about. You know, like there's no other way to like, no, WWE has not used the name in eight years. Okay. So it's not about tradition. First of all, this Vince doesn't even follow his own fucking traditions. Like the King of the Ring was a good tradition. He just said, fuck the King of the Ring. I, I'm not doing King of the Ring. The only tradition he really keeps up is the brands, you know, WrestleMania, Royal Rumble, and, you know, Raw and SmackDown and stuff like that. He doesn't really care about tradition any other way. He rebrands every fucking pay-per-view. So why would the Great American Bash... You know, I, I, I understand. I understand that Triple H is the boss of NXT. And Triple H is in some old NWA mark who, you know, when he was wrestling, he kind of wanted to be Harley Race and Ric Flair. And, you know, that's kind of how his... That was his thing. But um, I just don't... It just doesn't feel... It didn't sit right with me when I saw it. You know, cause I, I, I would just, I kind of put myself in Cody's shoes. Like, yeah, he was probably on screen or something, not paying attention. But like, when you get to the back and you kind of hear that, you're like, damn, like you already counter, counter programming us, which is, you know, it is what it is. But to use my dad's IP, that's fucked up. You know, now you're making me compete with my dad's memory. I, I don't like that. I think that's kind of scummy. And I'm uh, usually people say, oh, you're a WWE fanboy, maybe. But this one is, I, I agree with this. They shouldn't be doing this. Not, not going to stop me from watching it, but they shouldn't be doing this. All right, so let's get into the, let's get into the card. So far, uh, the, the June, the late June, I don't know if it's 30th or the 31st. So you get Dexter Loomis versus Roderick Strong in a strap match. Um, I'm going to go with Dexter Loomis because they're doing this story where Roderick Strong is scared of Dexter Loomis. So I'm going to go with Dexter Loomis in this story. And doing a fatal four-way for the number one contendership for the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, Mia Yim versus Tegan Knox versus Candice LeRae versus Dakota Kai. Um, I don't understand why Candice LeRae is involved or Mia Yim. But um, I'm just going to go with Dakota Kai because Ayo Shirai is a babyface. So let's go with uh, Dakota Kai. And plus she, she wanted to... She wants. She basically just called out the title match. Anyway, she wanted it. Like she challenged Io Shirai, and but some somehow we ended up with this goddamn fatal four way. And uh, you have Rhea Ripley versus Aaliyah and Robert Stone in a handicap match. If uh, Rhea Ripley loses, 
she has to join the Robert Stone brand. Um, it would make sense for uh, Rhea Ripley to lose here. And just because she has nothing else to do, that maybe she should join the Robert Stone brand. You know, kind of how uh, John Cena had to join the Nexus. Like, she could join and just, you know, tell pretty good, pretty good, pretty cool stories there. Maybe you could have another character um, interfere and join the Robert Stone brand voluntarily. And upon doing that, uh, that character is the one, a third party is the reason why Rhea Ripley loses. So you can have like, I don't know, maybe Chelsea Green returns and Chelsea Green tricks, you know, beats up Rhea Ripley or something from behind and she gets pinned by Aaliyah and now all of them are the Robert Stone brand. Um, the July the 8th episode is going to be winner take all. Now I'm actually looking forward to this. Uh, Adam Cole versus Keith Lee for the uh, winner take all NXT and NXT North American championships. This match is going to be a banger. It's going to be a banger. But, you know, Adam Cole is going to slap that leg, man. He's he, he going to do it. You know, Johnny Gargano is a leg slapping motherfucker, dog. <laughs> just, it's just he does it way too much. And Finn Bauer, he's a motherfucker that does it a lot, too. But um, this match is going to be fucking awesome. And I actually expect Keith Lee to win. Not only just I me, mean, partly because Adam Cole, Adam Cole's title run has been going on for fucking ever. And it's time for it to end. But they've also kind of been slowly but surely building Keith Lee. And it's time for them to really just pay it off. Now, he's been, they've been doing pink shoes, Keith Lee, for like three months now. Um, I'm tired of that shit. I want, you know, the monster Keith Lee back. And it's not like he can, he can tap into it a little bit. But I think it's time for him to be the top guy of NXT. And I think that's a good, and I think this is a good thing to counter with, you know, what AEW is doing. I'm going to do a video on Fighter Fest as well. But um, this is, I think that's a meaty match that can, over, like, maybe it's not going to outdraw, you know, Jericho and Orange Cassidy in the, uh, in the demographics. But I expect them to at least maybe win that night because I just don't see anything on the other show that I would, that people would be more interested in than a um, uh, winner take all. It's not that even I care about that. I don't care about ratings. But, you know, for those who might, that's my that's my second prediction. So I think that um, obviously Dakota Kai is going to end up wrestling back to back weeks. She's going to win the Fatal 4 away and she's going to wrestle uh, Io, Shirai, Io Shirai on the July 8th episode. And I expect Io Shirai to win. Dakota Kai is just not there yet. Even though I like her, she's just not there yet. Um, but we will t we, we'll talk again if uh, if, you know, something changes and the car as the card for the next show builds. But let me know what you guys think about all the things that I brought into this video. Um, this when I when I, <laughs> I actually did research for this video. But uh, like this video, share and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later. Tell me what you guys think about all the ideas I presented in this video. Let me know in the comment section, and I'll talk to you guys later.